Hey guys, Meat Bottles, Chris Tomer here. I want to bring you an update today talking about La Nina, where we're at and where we're headed because there have been some small changes in the overall complexion, especially when it comes to ocean temperature forecasting. So here's the summary from the Climate Prediction Center. Still in a, in a La Nina watch, and the ocean temps in the South Pacific near the equator are trending colder. Um, and they have us at a 71% chance that La Nina is going to be the driving force late fall in this winter. And, and why does that matter? Because it sets up the storm track across the West, across North America in general, and that helps to determine who's going to get the most consistent snow. So that's Climate Prediction Center. Here's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a few signals come in for a weaker La Nina. Now, I was already forecasting a La Nina light, so I knew it was going to be weak. But the European model has come in even weaker at minus 0.25 Celsius to minus 0.5. So that means in that critical region in the South Pacific near the equator, the water is going to be colder than normal, but not as cold, possibly, as was previously forecast on that particular model. North American multi-model uh, ensemble still has us dipping to about minus 0.5 Celsius. So that's definitely a La Nina light. Um, the multivariate index takes a look at ocean temp anomalies, but also in some total five different variables and comes up with an index. The index right now is minus 0.7. Um, anything in the minus category would represent colder than normal water, colder than normal scenario, a colder than normal scenario or index value. It's not a Celsius value, it's an index value. So it's tilting in the, in the La Nina direction as well. Now, let me just show you the bottom line on this. If we do end up in a much, much weaker La Nina than what's being forecast, then minor adjustments to the winter forecast will have to, will have to occur. In other words, we might have to nudge the storm track a little further north. Here's how that would look. So here's my forecast. Back in September, when I looked at the winter forecast, the green area represents the area I think will have the most consistent snow this winter, and even many areas with above normal snowfall. And you can see the jet forecast that I have right there. Now, if things continue down this path, and I haven't done it yet, but if they do, we'll have to nudge everything a little bit north, a little bit further to the north. Now, that's still going to put a, it's still going to put the green over the top of BC and the Pacific Northwest, Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, and probably Oregon. The areas in jeopardy of change are really extreme northern California, northern Utah, and northwest Colorado. Those would be the areas that might have to be trimmed a little bit or the storm track would get pushed out of those areas. Haven't done that yet, haven't made that change. Just an interesting thing to notice right now with some of these forecasts coming in a little bit weaker. So what is La Nina? Well, it's all about the water in the South Pacific near the equator. That blue area is where we would have the cooler than normal water. That tends to uh, set up the high pressure, and then that tends to nudge the jet into that configuration. So that's how it all works graphically. That's how it looks in the atmosphere. Let me show you some of the numbers here, some of the values. So here's the multivariate index. Again, looks at like five factors other than just water temps. You can see where we are. We, we went from El Nino in the red colors. Now we went to neutral and then now we're kind of tilting into the blue colors at minus 0.7 on the index. That's the latest value. That represents, yeah, we're heading into a colder phase. Now the issue is when you look back in time, we've had some pretty strong La Niñas. Look at some of the values in previous years. And this might even be a better way to look at it. You can see how things oscillate over time. And just there at the very far right of that near 2025, you can see a couple of small blue prongs down there. Pretty weak index value, but colder. But it's nowhere near some of these previous years when we had much stronger La Niñas. This is going to be a pretty weak La Niña, and you can see it here. As 2024 dives down into the colder phase, it's not going to go much further down. It's not going to drop much further uh, down on that uh, that index. It's it's going to be one of the weaker La Niñas. It's not going to be anything like 2011. It's not going to be like, you know, probably even 1999. Some of these bigger snow years, 96. This looks like it's going to be on the weaker side. And let me show you how this has changed on the European model. So this was the plume, the forecast from September for that critical Nino 3.4 region, South Pacific, near the equator. 
you can see the forecast was down anywhere from minus 0.5 Celsius to minus 1 Celsius. Now, look at it. It's all shifted up a little bit closer to that neutral line. Probably minus 0.25 is potentially as good as it gets. When you look at the, the tight clustering, that's probably where this lands now. I'll take you back one more time and show you. Again, there's September. Here's October. That's a pretty important change. Now, here's the suite of everything else. The North American multi-model ensemble takes into account a bunch of different things, different uh, forecast models. Now, there's the, the pretty much the average on this of all that is right around minus 0.5 Celsius. Some of the models still dip much lower. Um, the climate forecast system, for example, that dips down to like minus one. Um, so interesting to note that. So that's what I'm seeing right now. And again, it all goes back to this. Here's the payoff. It's that winter forecast. I haven't made any changes to my winter forecast yet. But potentially, I explain, you know, what areas might be in jeopardy. That's northwest Colorado, northern Utah, northern Nevada even, and extreme northern California around Shasta. So we'll see if those areas have to get trimmed. It'll be very interesting, and we'll know more once we get to November 1st, because then we'll get a whole new, um, a whole new slice across the board and see what the new index values are, see what the new water temp anomalies are, and see what the next package, forecast package looks like coming in um, as far as forecast ocean temps. So that's where we stand right now, guys. Um, let me um, end it right here. Again, here's the bottom line on this. Haven't made these adjustments yet, but that's potentially what's at stake. Thanks for tuning in here to this update. Always appreciate it. Take care, guys, and have a great day.